Praise God. This morning we're going to talk about the Lord's Prayer. Um, in Matthew 6, 9 through 13, how many of you can quote the Lord's Prayer by memory? Yeah, I knew Judy was going to raise that hand. Praise God. How many? You don't have to raise your hand on this part. How many of you have really studied what each sentence means in the Lord's Prayer? I know Marty has. I sent him the information and he got excited because he prays the Lord's Prayer every morning. But he doesn't just quote it verbatim. God lays on his heart what to pray over each sentence. And in Matthew 6, Jesus was giving the disciples instruction like he does so well. And he wasn't only giving them instruction on how to pray. He was giving us instructions on how to pray. And the Lord's Prayer is actually a model prayer. You know what I mean? He says, pray in this manner. Our Father who art in heaven. And he, and he goes on. But I won't, I am in a few minutes, I'm just going to read it real quickly like we usually do. And then after that, we'll explain a little bit more about it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read it quickly. So, um, y'all listen fast. Our Father who art in heaven. Yes. Oh. Uh, don't interrupt me. I'm, I'm praying. I'm praying the Lord's Prayer. But you called me. Called you? I didn't call you. I'm praying. Our Father which art in heaven. There. You did it again. Did what? Called. You said, Our Father which art in heaven. Here I am. What's bugging you? What's on your mind? But I, I didn't really mean anything by it. I was just, you know, praying like I pray it every day. I always pray the Lord's Prayer every morning. And it makes me feel good, you know, kind of like I've done my duty. All right. Go ahead on. Hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Whoa. Back up the camel. Hold it. What did you mean by that? By what? By hallowed be thy name. It means um, hallowed. It means, oh my goodness, uh, I don't know what it means. Uh, uh, how should I know what it means? It's only a part of the prayer. What does it mean? It means honored, holy, wonderful. Hey, that makes sense. I never thought what hallowed really meant. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you really mean that? Sure, why not? What are you going to do about it? Do? Doing nothing, I guess. I just thought it would be kind of neat if you had control on everything on earth like you do in heaven. Have I got control of you? Uh, <laughs> well, I go to church. What? I go to church. So does the devil. That's not what I ask you. What about that little habit you have? <laughs> you didn't think I knew about that, did you? And your temper. My, my, you really got a problem there. The whole family knows about that one. And probably some of the neighbors also. How about the way you spend your money? All on yourself. What about me? Look at the kind of books and mags you read. How about that TV show you just can't bear to miss? And... Mercy, mercy, that movie you went to see last week. Uh, I, stop picking on me, please. Uh, I'm just as good as some of the rest of those phonies in church. <clears throat> Excuse me. I thought you were praying for my will to be done. Um, if that is to happen, it will have to start with the ones who are praying for it. Like you, for example. Well, um, all right, I guess I do have some hang-ups uh, that you mentioned. I could probably name some others as well. So could I, and mucho more. <laughs> you know, I haven't thought about it very much until now, but I would really like to 
cut out some of those things I'm doing that I shouldn't be doing. And I would like to, you know, be really free. Good. Now we're getting somewhere. We'll work together, you and I. Some victories can be truly won. I am so proud of you. Look, Lord, I need to finish up here. This is taking a lot longer than usual. Give us this day our daily bread. You need to cut out the bread. You're overweight as it is. No, you're fat and lazy. <laughs> Wait a minute. What is this? Pick on Joyce Day? Criti you're criticizing me. Uh, criticize me, Dave. Here I was doing my religious duty, and all of a sudden you break in and remind me of my hang-ups. Praying is a dangerous thing. You could wind up changed, you know. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. You called me, and here I am. It's not too late to stop. Keep praying. I'm interested in the next part of your prayer. I'm scared, Well. Too. Go on. I'm scared to. Scared? <laughs> scared of what? I know what you'll say. <laughs> Try me and see. Okay. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. What about Susie? Oh. See, I knew you were going to bring up Susie. I knew you were. Why, she told lies about me, she stole money from me, she never paid back that debt she owes me, and I've sworn to get even with that girl. But what about your prayer? I didn't mean it. Well, at least you're honest. But it's not much fun carrying all that humongous load of bitterness around inside, is it? No, but I can hardly wait to get even with Susie. <laughs> Boy, have I got some plans for that old girl. <laughs> she will wish she never did me any harm. <laughs> you won't feel any better. You'll feel worser and worser. Revenge isn't sweet. Just think of how miserable and unhappy you already are. But if you're interested, I can change all that. You can? How? Forgive Susie as I've already forgiven you. Then the hate and sin will be Susie's problem and not yours. You may lose the money, but you will have gained so much more. You've settled your heart. But Lord, I just can't forgive Susie. I then just can't. I can't forgive you. Oh, you're right, but you're always right. And more than I want revenge on Susie, I want to be right with you, Father. All right, all right. I forgive Susie. Help her, Lord, to find the right road in life. She's bound to be awfully miserable now that I think about it. Anybody that goes around doing the things that she does to others has to be out of it. Some way, somehow, show her the right way, Lord, and help me just to forget it as well. There now. See how easy that was? Just a wonderful, a wonderful. How do you feel? Wow, hmm, I feel great. Matter of fact, I feel pretty good. You know, I think I'll be able to rest at night now because I usually go to bed just so uptight because of this thing that's always on my mind about Susie. But you know what? I think now I'll rest well and I won't be so tired during the daytime as well. You're not through with your prayer. Go on. Oh, all right. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Good, good. Awesome. I'll do just that. But from now on, just don't put yourself in a place where you can be tempted. What do you mean by that? Quit hanging around with that bunch of losers. <laughs> They're always getting into trouble. Those are, the, those are the very ones your nanny warned you about. <laughs> Stay away from them. Get shut of some of your so-called friends. They'll have you involved in wrong things before long. 
Don't be fooled, be wise. Get some new friends, real friends, true friends. Your old friends advertise they're having fun, but for you it would be ruined. Don't use me for an escape hatch. I don't understand. Sure you do. You've done it a million times. You get into bad situations, you get into trouble, and then you come running to me. Oh, Lord, help me out of this mess, and I promise you, I'll never, ever do it again. Lordy, Lordy, do you remember some of those one-sided bargains you tried to make with me? Well, yes, I remember, and I'm ashamed, Lord. I'm really ashamed. I'm so sorry. I really am. Up until now, I thought that if I just prayed the Lord's Prayer every day, I could do what I wanted to do. But now I realize I cannot. Go ahead. Finish your prayer. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Do you know what would bring me glory? What would really make me happy? No, but I would like to know. I would like to know what pleases you, Father. I can see what a mess I've made of my life, and I can see how neat it would be to be really one of your followers, Father. Hallelujah. You just answered the question. I did? Yes. You see, the thing that would bring me glory is to have people, many people like you, truly love me. And I see that happening between us. Now that some of these old sins are exposed and out of the way, well, there's no telling what we can do together. Oh, let's see what we can make of me, Father, okay? Yes, let's see. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Give to your hand the voice of God. <laughs> he, he ringed me out pretty good, didn't he? Praise God. Uh, I thought that was a really neat skit. And you know, sometimes it kind of hits home with some of us. And young people always run with the right crowd because you see what can happen. You see what happened to me? No, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> if I'm not running with the right crowd now, I'm in trouble. Okay, uh, this morning also, what came to my heart is some of you here and some on social media may ha actually have unforgiveness in your heart. You may have been hurt by someone, and you know, it's about all you can think about is how they hurt you and what they did to you, and you try to just push it out, but you, you're having problems. And what I would like for you to do with, with me this morning, everyone, so no one will be singled out, I would like for you to pray with me a forgiveness prayer, if you would do that. Because sometimes, you know, we're, we know we're carrying hurt. I think Bobby mentioned that in Sunday school this morning, or somebody did, but it was Doug. But we don't really know it's unforgiveness until the light comes on, until we get revelation from God. So this morning, if you would pray with me, or pray after me, and you'll fill in the blank of the person that you're forgiving, okay? Father God... I have unforgiveness in my heart toward, name the person, I don't want this in my life. I'm asking you to forgive me for these bad feelings that I have toward, I say with my mouth, I forgive For everything they have done to me. I release the whole situation into your hands. Father God, I ask you to help that person to be a better person too. I thank you so much, Father God, for grace to forgive. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> now, grace to forgive. What the word grace means, that is his empowering presence. 
He's the one who empowers us to be able to forgive. Did you know that? We confess with our mouth and we speak forgiveness towards someone and we ask God to forgive us for holding unforgiveness. But do you know it's His grace, it's His empowering presence in our spirit that makes us actually able to forgive? So He even receives all the glory and all the praise. It's just we make up our mind to forgive so that we can be forgiven. Um, and I want to give you a word of wisdom. The enemy, if you had something in your heart and you forgave them, the enemy will try to trip you up. You may think about that person and the bad thoughts may begin to come back. And immediately you put your foot down and you say, No, get thee hence, Satan. God's grace has set me free from that unforgiveness and I speak blessings over whoever it is. Bless them, Lord. Bless them every day, Father. And the enemy will back off. So know they're lying spirits that will try to come to you and cause you to feel badly about that person. But you've asked for forgiveness and God has forgiven you and you have forgiven that person. Praise God. And now you can go on with God. If you had any unforgiveness in your heart, you can go on with God freely knowing that he's going to hear and he's going to answer your prayer as well. Praise God. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. The first part, our Father which art in heaven. That part. <laughs> I can't get the top on. Okay, there we go. Praise God. We begin by thanking God. When we say the Lord's Prayer, we begin by thanking the Lord, our Father. Uh, for sending his son to redeem us. Galatians 4, 4 through 6. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are a son, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. He is your Father because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Because He sent His Son to die on the cross. He sent His Son to take the stripes on His back for your healing. He sent His Son to shed His blood for your salvation, for abundant life on this earth and also eternal life with Him. And that's why we can call Him Father because of Jesus. Hallelujah. And our God's fatherhood is perfect. Our God has no flaws. You know, human fathers have flaws. And they may say something or do something to hurt your feelings, or maybe they weren't the greatest father in the world. But I want to tell you something. We have a father who is awesome and wonderful, and he loves us even when we do mess up. Hallowed, hallowed be thy name. And hallowed means to be separated for praise, glory, and adoration. And the, I want to give you some Hebrew names of our Father. If you don't know what Hebrew means, that means Old Testament names for our wonderful, loving Father. He is Jehovah Sidkenu. He's our righteousness. He's Jehovah Makadesh. God who sanctifies. We can praise Him because our sins have been forgiven. He's continuously sanctifying us and set, setting us free. We confess our sins and He forgives us. Jehovah Shalom, He is our peace. If you can just stop when you say the Lord's Prayer and you say, My Father, You are my peace. You're my peace. In this world, there is no peace. But when you know Father God, you can have peace in your heart. Jehovah Shammah, God is present. Lord is there. In other words, he always, He's always with us. He never leaves us or forsakes us, does He? Jehovah Rapha, God is our healer. He's the God who heals. He wants to heal our infirmities and our sicknesses. And as we 
continue to trust him and stand on his word, there'll come a day that we will be healed totally. We've already been healed and we're believing him from victory, not defeat. Jehovah Jireh, God's provision shall be seen. He provides our needs. He redeems us from the curse of failure and inferiority. There is no reason for you to feel inferior to anyone. And if you do fail, you run to Father, and he'll forgive you, and he will help you. He's Jehovah Nisi. He's our banner. We praise him for giving us freedom from death in hell. When Jesus died on the cross, he went to hell and he took the keys of death, hell and the grave and he made a show of the devil openly triumphing over him in the cross so we have no reason to feel inferior or like we're less. There's no little ones in the kingdom and there's no big ones. We're all in this together because he loves us all the same and I want to tell you what, he loves the world as well. He loves those even in our national office I pray for their souls, but I also pray, Lord, get them out of there. Sorry. Um, <laughs> he's Jehovah, I'm so honest. He's Jehovah Rafi. He is our shepherd. He leads us through the valley of the shadow of death and into the house of the Lord where we will dwell forever. Can you even begin to imagine living with Jesus and Father God and Holy Spirit forever and ever? Wow. I, I just, you know, I'm not ready to go to heaven now. I don't know if they're taking a bus load right now, but I want to wait a few more years because I don't think God's through with me here yet. Give us this day our daily bread. If, if we will just spend quiet time with our Father, I have learned if I, in the mornings I sit up in bed and I drink my coffee that my husband brings me and... Uh, I'm sitting there and I'm saying, Father God, what's on your heart this morning and what do you have for me? And I sit there quietly and do you know he will actually speak to you? He may give you a scripture. He may tell you to pray for someone in the body, but we've got to take time to sit before him quietly. He may say, I'm the bread of life. In John 6, 35, he may say to you, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Hebrews 13, 5b, he may tell you, don't be anxious for anything, but trust me. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, daily bread is not just our physical bread. And if we rush through that prayer, we think, well, I'm going to have plenty to eat today. (laughs) Daily bread is not just our physical bread, but it's the bread for our souls and our bodies. And Jesus is that bread. So we must spend quiet, quality time with our Lord. And forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. We pretty well covered that, but I'm going to go ahead and read some scripture. I love this scripture here. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Psalm 139, 23 and 24. 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and he's just to forgive us of our sins. So just like a while ago, if you had any unforgiveness, God forgave you as you forgave others. In prayer, there's a connection in what God does and what you do. We're partners with Him. Have you ever thought about it that way, that you're actually a partner with God Almighty? Wow. Ephesians 4, 32, And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Wow. And how did we say that's possible? First, we speak it with our mouth and we rely on God's grace, and that's his empowering presence. And when the enemy comes to try to trip you up, say, you haven't forgiven them. You say, oh, yes, I have, because almighty God's presence is living inside of me, and I'll not think harshly of that person anymore. In Jesus' name, praise God. What an awesome God we serve. You... um, Matthew 6 and 15, you can't get forgiveness from God unless you forgive others. If you refuse to do your part, you cut yourself off from God's part. Have you ever thought about that? 
He says, if you don't forgive, I can't forgive you. And I've walked in unforgiveness, and I would wonder why my life was so frustrating. Even my prayer life was getting frustrating, and my Bible reading, and I wasn't getting the revelation that I wanted. And God says, until you forgive that person, you're not going to be free. Wow, what a difference when I did. Um, Okay, uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 9, he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. You have any weaknesses? Praise God, he'll become your strength. We all have different weaknesses, don't we? And he says, I'll be your strength. Just lean on me. Okay, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. TR pretty well covered that one. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I've been reamed out. <laughs> it's a good thing it's my bubble. <laughs> Did anybody else? No, I'm kidding. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We must pray that we don't come into temptation by being careless. Listen to this, young people. Are you listening? Don't put yourself in a position where you will be tempted and fall into that temptation. Don't put yourself with the ungodly and give in to their peer pressure. It's not that you're around the ungodly. You are to be a shining light. You're to be the strong one because you have Jesus living in you. So be very careful and don't give in to what they're doing because you will stand out like this and others will look at you. They may call you goody two-shoes. They may call you all kinds of things. But you know what? That's all right because you've got Jesus and you want them to have Jesus. Like this young lady said, there are young people out there that are hurting. I mean really hurting. And you may come across them even on your job or at school and you, you just want to just shun them. But God says don't shun them. Be that light to them and win them. They may be one of those that are being mistreated and hurt and trafficking. We don't know. They're all around us. And I know that Missouri County is one that has a lot of trafficking. It has a lot. And so we're continuing to pray. We need prayer and we need action. So whatever God leads you to do to help this young lady, she's doing an awesome work. I, I'm, I'm open to do what you would have me to do because this is so important. We can save someone from hell. We can save them from going to hell. We can save them and we can help them learn how to forgive those that have hurt them so that they can be free to go help others. Praise God. That's not in my notes. <laughs> Whoa. And we've got to know this. We have an enemy. In 1 Peter 5 and 8, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He don't want to just hound you a little bit. He wants to totally devour you. But I've got good news. This word says be sober. And the word sober here means be alert and watchful against your enemy. Be very alert. How can I be alert against the devil? By reading his, God's word, by waiting before the Lord, and then we will see and we will know, oh, that's not from God. That's the enemy. And even false doctrine, when it comes at you, you'll be going, uh-uh, I'm sober. I'm vigilant because I know that's the enemy trying to trip me up. And to be vigilant means to be on guard against the strategies of the evil one. He never sleeps. He's always got strategies to come against you and come against the church. But I want to tell you, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. You are victorious in Jesus. Okay, we need to cast off the works of darkness. Put your spiritual armor on. Who is our spiritual armor? Jesus. He is the armor of light. Romans 13, 12 through 14. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness 
and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and not in envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Folks, this is possible. We may be tempted to do something that we know is wrong, but I guarantee you it's God's grace. It's his empowering presence that will save us from that temptation. For friends, I mean for, excuse me, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are to praise God that he would dare to share his power and his glory with us. Wow. When Anna Jo said there was such anointing up here, I looked at Shirley and I said, oh, good. Because <laughs> I'm fixed to walk right up there in it. And I praise God for the anointing. I praise God for his presence. I praise God that his glory is here. And his glory means his presence. His great presence is here. And I'm going to share one more thing and then I'm going to be quiet. I really am. <laughs> Praise God. I want to ask you something. Did you know that God wrote a, wrote a book about you before you were born? Did you know that? See how special you are? Young people, God knew you before you were conceived in your mother's womb. And he wrote a book. Psalm 113, excuse me, Psalm 139, 16 says, Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. He wrote a book for your days. I said, Lord, some of my days, I don't think that was in your book. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I messed up a few times. But you know what? That's how much he loves us. He wrote a personal book for us. He has such plans for you young people. He has great plans for you. He loves you that much that he would say, what is your name in the black shirt? Tanner. Tanner. He said, that's, my t that's Tanner. That's my boy. I'm going to write a book about Tanner because I have a work and a call in the ministry for Tanner. There's work for you in the ministry and you felt it in your heart at times but you've been a little confused because you didn't know which way to turn. But Father God is saying to you by His Spirit that you will get on the right road. And there's those out there, there's those in here that would love to help you. We have men in here that can lead you and guide you because you're called to the ministry. And we're all called to the ministry, but I see you behind the pulpit and you're ministering the Word of God. And I thank you for that, Father. Tanner, God loves you. He loves all of you young people. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He knew your form. He even knew what you were going to look like. I said, oh God, I want to be shorter. <laughs> but when I was younger, I felt like a giraffe, you know. Isn't that terrible how we're not happy with the way we look? I want to be short like some of those other girls at school because they're so cute, <laughs> you know. Don't worry about your physical stature. That's, that's beside the point. He loves you just like you are. So the scripture affirms that God knows everything about our lives in advance with his perfect omniscience. He knows everything. What a love he, he has for his children. The Lord saw David's unborn state and planned the days for, that David would live. You know, none of us know how long we're going to live. Did you know that? We don't know what day we're going home to be with Jesus. So why don't we take each day and live it to the fullest? Be 100% for God and let him lead us and guide us by his spirit. And it's not hard because he's the one 
that puts it in us. He gives us, he even gives us the desire to work, to praise him, to worship him, to live for him. He gives us that desire. We can't even take credit for that. He's an awesome God. And he will, mm, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that you're raising up young people even in this place. You're raising them up in this place to be on fire for you and to be ministers for you and to minister and, and to their friends. Glory to God. And us older people, Father, you, you're not through with us. I want to speak to those that are over 70. I want to tell you, you're just getting started. I know I'm just getting started. Praise God. There's a great work for you to do. Don't you stop. Don't you say I'm retired and I'm not going to do this anymore and I'm not going to do that anymore because God will put a fire under your feet and he will say, oh, yes, you are. You're going to do, you're going to fulfill the work and the call that I have placed in your life. And when you turn 55, you're not retired, you're refired. Do you hear that? You serve God with everything that's in you and don't you stop. And he'll heal you and he'll give you the energy and he'll give you the strength in your body to do what you need to do. Don't sit around. Don't sit around. Don't get in that recliner. But you know how you know how uh, easy it is to fall asleep in a recliner? All you have to be is old and sit in a recliner and you will fall asleep. So stay out of the recliners. Praise God. <laughs> Voice of experience. Hallelujah. God is so good. He loves you so much. We love you here. Please, those of you that are visiting, please come back and be with us. We love you. We love you so much. But most of all, your Father loves you and He has a work and a plan for your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, hmm. I'll just ask some of you to raise your hands. You may be, you may need healing in your body. You may need um, healing in your soul. Maybe the Lord has the Holy Spirit has really sparked something in you this morning. And you have this, right now you're saying, I can do this. But you know when you leave, maybe even your home life is not well, and the enemy will try to pounce on you. And you just need spiritual strength this morning to do what God's called you to do. Spiritual strength, emotional strength. Do you know the crown on his head? The crown he wore on his head was for our emotional and our mental strength. He wants to heal your mind. It doesn't matter what you did in the past because he forgives, he forgets, and then he does a process of healing in your soul. He's an awesome God. So if you have maybe just something in your soul, maybe it is that bad habit or something that you want to get rid of, you just raise your hands this morning, we'll pray. Or if you just need physical healing, whatever it is, maybe you'd like to just stand and we'll just reach our hands towards you. And anything, it doesn't have to be what I called out. It doesn't have to be sin. Just whatever. You have a great need, and you just need the body just to lift their hands towards you and believe with you. If you would just stand, we'll be happy to just pray for you this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We lift our hands toward Brother Marty and toward Cecilia. Father, you know their needs. You know what's on their heart. Father, and I know these two people, their hearts are towards you. And Lord, we're asking for healing in the bodies, deliverance and healing for Marty's precious wife, healing, Father, emotional healing, Lord, and for Cecilia, her request, Lord, for her family. I just see her standing for her family and for her sons. And Lord, we agree with her that freedom is coming to her family in the precious name 
of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God bless y'all.